All right, so welcome to Night Hacking Interviews at the DevOps Conference. I'm joined here by Dick Wall, Scala enthusiast, and I've, I've heard that you've been working on a new course as part of the Parlay's tutorials. Yeah, uh, Stefan and Carlo uh, reached out to us all uh, probably about four or five months ago and said they were going to be doing uh, a new course uh, based uh, system for Parlay's and would we be interested. And Bill and I have always talked about getting our courses online. We never really had the right, uh, the right confluence of opportunity and, uh, and tools before. And so this was, this was perfect for us. Yeah, no, so I guess building out your own channel is um, a lot of work. It is, and the, you know, the um, hosting is actually a fairly serious problem. The, the videos are big, and if it gets popular, you actually have to figure out how you're gonna pay for that much bandwidth, that sort of thing. So going through a service where all of that is sorted out and whether, you know, Parlay's already delivers tons of content, so they've already yeah, figured no, out all he's that stuff. Yeah, he's figured out the content delivery network yeah. stuff for video pretty well at this point. I never <laughs> underestimate things like that. I know what it's like from running the posse that, you know, Libsyn fortunately takes care of all that. And occasionally things go wrong with Libsyn and people complain. And every time I'm like, it is far better than I could do myself. You know, it's far more reliable, nice. far, far better delivery network than I could do myself. So, yeah, we were waiting for the right the right opportunity, and that came along. So, awesome. So, I also heard that you had your first sales of your yeah of yeah. Your I I haven't looked yet. Uh, I I uh, got got in this morning, and Carla came up and said, "Yeah, congratulations. Uh, we <laughs> apparently sold the very first one that was sold as well." Uh, and that's, there's been three that's or pretty four good. More it was only announced then. yesterday. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. Being, I think I think when I talked to him this morning at breakfast, he said there were two courses which had sales, and yours was one of them. Ah, that's great. Okay, so, so you're you're in the elite. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it's 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 good. The uh, the format of the so you know parlays itself actually really reflects when we do our training, uh, when we do it live, and we've been doing it for several years in a kind of live environment. We always have uh, two screens up. We have a projector, a dual projector setup. And the slides are in one, and the live coding demos are in the other. And so Parlays was a natural fit for that. It's, it's got that two screen set up, and you've got the slides and the, yeah, so the live coding. Yeah, so they can see you talking, they can see the slides, and right. details, your desktop if you're showing a live coding demo. Right, exactly. Um, and uh, so you know, it, it, that, that fit, the, the tools were there for editing it on Linux very easily, which was a big one for me. Nice. We, I we think it's all HTML5 based, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and the editor is too. It works great. That was one of the problems with the other. We've had various people approach us before. And the problems were always, I would say, I, I run Linux. What have you got? And they never had a really satisfactory answer on the tooling. So getting it all on the web just made everything really easy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think compared to courses or sessions or even tutorials here at DevOx, you can get in a lot more detail yes. on the oh, technology. Yeah. yeah, so we split our, our course is three days, and we split it into three parts yeah. uh, to mirror each day. And those are between four and six hours each. So there's a okay. lot of material. And that's just the videos. And then there's all the hands-on exercises. And I really like this. Like The, the, problem, uh, the problem with teaching Scala is that Scala is a big, big set of, of stuff to learn. And with three days, you sort of have to really prioritize what you teach. And it's yeah. still a rush to get it all in there. I like the fact that they, people have you know, self-paced learning now. They can watch these, uh, you know, drop out, come back in, take yeah, their so time. Yeah, so that also counts for different skill levels, because I think people coming into Scala have very different backgrounds in yes. terms of what they know about functional programming, whether they've used any languages like Scala right. it's in less. The past. Definitely less about skill and more, and more about their experience levels. So, I mean, we've had on our courses, we've had some very bright, uh, very gifted uh, computer science people who are, you know, take to it immediately. And then we get people who are using Scala as part of their day to day job, and they may be scientists or mathematicians. Mm -hmm. And they definitely have a slower, uh, a slower uptake, but it's also interesting to see that they have a much more complete uptake when they do that. Hmm. So the, the computer science people are, are used to kind of diving in and just getting what they need and getting it working. The maths guys and the science guys, they really want to understand all the principles behind it. It's yeah, a much more so deliberate kind understanding of... Understanding the Scala type system in detail, yeah. that, that's a lot of brain power. <laughs> yeah. Well, we haven't done that one yet. So we've, we've got a second course, which is the advanced course. 
Cool. Uh, we wanted to. We were up against the wall in terms of you know time to put all this together. So we concentrated on getting the basic course or the the applied course, as we call it, up there first. The advanced course we're now going to work on, and we're going to try and get that out by the end of the year. So that will be up there too. Hopefully, by the time people have been through the the applied course, they'll be ready for that, and uh, it'll it'll then go out. But um, yeah, no, that, that that makes sense, and it, it mirrors kind of the order. Yeah, people are going to learn things in. And we, when we do the live training, we recommend people take a bit of a break in between the applied yeah. and the advanced just to get some experience. Uh, it's, it's hard to teach them all of these kind of heavy theory subjects before they understand the need for them. And yeah. so it's only when you get into Scala for a bit and you start using it, you use the libraries and then you're like, I really want to write my own library. That's when they need the advanced training. And it takes a little while to get to that stage. So. It, it's good that in some ways that there is this gap, although we will try and get it up online as quick as we can. So, Yeah, so do you teach people kind of best practices on, on Scala coding styles and you know features or things they should focus on when they're building their own applications? Definitely, yeah. So that's a, it's a running theme throughout the whole course. Yeah. Uh, in, in the advanced course, we actually have specific modules on design patterns and uh, idioms that I used. But even from the, from the get-go, we start teaching you know, things like vowels over vars and immutable over mutable, mm -hmm. uh, and trying to get people into the, the mindset of using things like higher order functions to, to accomplish things and you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, the, the idioms are there throughout, but there's a, in, in the advanced course, there's actually specific uh, you know, recommendations and uh, lessons modules on those. So. Cool. No, sounds good. Sounds like I might actually need to take your course to oh, cool. up on my. I, I kind of dove headfirst into Scala for things I needed to get done, but I skipped over the basics. Right. Well, <laughs> and, and that's. I mean, that's the way we all started. Uh, before there was any training, that was certainly how I did it. Was uh, Scala was a better Java to start with, and you just sort of worked in it and wrote Java, but in a Scala style. And gradually, very gradually, the the style came up to a more functional level. Yeah. And now, you know, what, what the training is intended to do in all of these cases is just accelerate that initial, uh, that initial stumbling kind of learning curve. It wasn't there when we started, but now there's plenty of resources out there. Ours is one, but there are others that sort of get you over that more quickly and get you to a, a more productive level more quickly. Cool. So how was using the Parlay's training platform as an, an author? It was really good. And the, the you know obviously, we were one of the first to use it. So we, we encountered some issues along the way. Carlo and Stefan were really responsive in nice. helping us out on, uh, on those. And I think we managed to shake out a, a, a fair few of the kind of bugs along the way. We identified some things that when you... So, so it's, it's safer for future yeah. <laughs> tutorial authors. And we also put in a few feature requests, too. So one of the things that when you, when you do the format that we're doing, and I'm not sure everybody will, but when you do the, the screencasts, yeah. you sort of do, um, well, at least the way we did it, you do a screencast per slide. And, yeah. you, and we actually record it that way. It makes it easier to replace slides and the screencasts for those slides without having to replace all of the rest of the material. So you end up with a, a bunch of you know, five to 10 minute long or even you know, two to 10 minute long segments for each slide that is the uh, sort of theory and the, the yep. screencast. And to put those in, you wanna, what I really want to be able to do is line them all up uh, in, t in time sequence, and then just drag them all across to the timeline and have them automatically concatenated. That feature isn't there right now, but it, it's, it was, you know, when I mentioned it, they said, that sounds like a good idea. We'll see if we can get that. It's not hard to drag them all in individually. Yeah, but it's kind of but manual, it would be, and you have to make sure you get the timings right that's and all right. that stuff currently. That's right. And then you've already got the gaps there, so it should also be trivial to uh, advance the slides automatically after each one. So those features would just make it really quick then to get the... Yeah, but uh, as a content author, the course you put together is all set to go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, and, and you know, re reordering it then would be also pretty, pretty easy. If you needed to, you could just delete the whole timeline, stick in the new video and new slides, and drag them in again, and it would reorganize itself exactly right. Cool. So, yeah, those are, those are good. But it, it, it took us... We got it down to probably about 15 to 20 minutes to put a course, once we'd recorded it. Recording yeah. it's the long part. Uh, but once we did that, about 15 to 20 minutes to put each of the uh, each of the lessons together, each of the uh, modules together. So cool. that was pretty good. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So thanks very much for taking some time to chat oh, about yeah. your your new course. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm, I'm looking forward to the posse roundup <laughs> later today. Oh, the, the episode, yes. 
yeah, there's going to be some significant uh, developments there, I think. So. Nice, nice. It's, that's always the highlight of the DevOps <laughs> conference. <laughs> well, there's always beer, that's why. So That, that helps. Our, our friends at Atlassian always provide the beer. That does now, help indeed. You guys, you guys seem to have a good mix of... Um, Entertainment and content. <laughs> it's mostly entertainment at DevOps. We know our audience here, and uh, every, everyone's had plenty of content. We're there to, to lighten things up a little and give them something yeah, to laugh Yeah, it's, but it's not just empty humor. There's actually little technical yeah. jabs, and you have to be following the trends to appreciate all of these jokes. <laughs> well, and there'll be plenty of that today. I think yeah. we're going to do a, to, just to give you a sneak peek, we're going to do a little bit of a retrospective of... Uh, you know, the last decade or so of uh, things that have happened and Ooh. some of the crazier predictions that we've made that have turned out to be completely wrong. <laughs> so uh, that will be fun. Yeah, well, I think it's more scary, the predictions you made, which <laughs> <laughs> you were joking and they came out to be true. That's also, that's also quite amusing, yes, when, yeah. uh, when you just say something and then all of a sudden a few, a few months later, oh, my goodness, that actually happened. Yeah, so. that's, that's the science fiction author's nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank right. you very much, Dave. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoy the